My name is Scott Rumschlag, and this is a self-rocking cradle that I just built. It goes for 11 minutes on a charge, but the best part is that this power cord has nothing to do with it. It's, it's not even the correct end. This is inspired by a clock's escaping mechanism, but in a clock, the pendulum part is just the regulator, whereas here, it's the regulator and it's the purpose. So if we call this the payload area, we're going to focus in on it and follow the motion all the way back to the source. Our box is pretty simple here because I don't actually have any children, so we're going to have to substitute a 22-pound iron block for the cargo. And in keeping with the theme, I thought that maybe we should have an illustration of somebody who's in need of a nap. Put that in there. Sides are just here to simulate air resistance because it would normally be a deeper box. And if we want to get it started, we just give it a little bit of uh, beginning energy. Just enough. The machine takes over. Our main parts are the pendulum, the drive wheel, the counterweight wheel, and the lock. Everything that rotates rides on a bearing. The ones that I like to use pretty often are skateboard bearings. The basic idea behind this machine is pretty simple. The pendulum wants to keep rotating, but it loses some energy to friction, air resistance, things like that. So on the top of it, on the opposite side of this, we have a small wheel, which is a ball bearing and that's being driven by those wedges that go past it. And on just the one stroke, when the top is going to the left, it adds a little bit of energy each time. You can see that wheel here, and you'll notice that it barely clears the bottom of that wedge when it returns. And that's because we don't want the wedge to rotate any further than it needs to. That'll be a waste of energy, and we're trying to conserve that so that we can make it swing as long as possible on one stroke of the weights. Now, we do have to regulate the speed of that drive wheel, because if we didn't, whenever that bearing on top of the pendulum was out of the way, it would just freewheel and spin out of control. So what we have here is a lock. That's the part that the yellow screw is tapping, and when it comes over, it taps it out of the way and lets it go one increment further. This is the bottom of that lock, and you can see when it's tapped out of the way so that the drive wheel can advance. The spring part is there to dampen the impact, because it was a little loud the first time around. And even here it's bouncing because this is an older clip. We added grease and it helped damp it more. On the back side, things are pretty simple. The small gear is coupled directly to the drive wheel, so there's no magic there. And the large gear is solely to drive that small gear with a ratio of 3 to 1. That gearing down allows us to use a heavier weight on its shaft and get more time out of it. And if you're wondering about that metal disc, yes, it is a diamond blade for an angle grinder. A worn out one, in fact, because the center of that wheel got a little chewed up and I had to, in order to keep it true, I had to spread out the compression force on a wider area. The weight itself is a little funny looking, but I didn't feel like building a dedicated weight for this project and I had these handy. So it's just a 35 pound kettlebell with five pounds of clamps, 40 pounds total. I want to prove my 11 minute claim, so here we have a time lapse of the weight descending from all the way up to all the way down. It's about 18 inches, and my phone is running right there on the bottom right, and when we get to the end, you can see the 11 minute mark. We're going to label this project done, but uh, that's definitely not the case because in the process of building it, I thought of improvements for just about every aspect of it, and I'd really like to revisit it at some point and see if we can't either get a lot more time out of it from the given counterweight or decrease the counterweight and get the same time out of it. So if you'd like to see how the whole project came together, we have a build series numbered 123 for Escapement Cradle, and you can see everything from the drawings and my initial idea up to this very ugly prototype, uneven, doesn't go all the way around, it only goes part of the way. Um, but uh, I think it's interesting to see how projects come together. Even for myself to watch my video, you can see what you were thinking. So I really appreciate all the viewers. Be sure to subscribe, and thank you for watching.